Imagine being a teenager, messing around with a seance, only to have your life turned into a living nightmare. This is the chilling tale of Estefania Gutierrez Lazaro, a young girl living in the quiet neighborhood of Vallecas, Madrid in the early 1990s. Her curiosity about the paranormal led her and her friends to conduct a seance at school, hoping to communicate with a friend who had tragically died in a motorcycle accident. Little did they know their innocent dabbling would trigger a series of events that would haunt Estefania and her family for years to come. In the days following the seance, Estefania began to change. She suffered from severe convulsions, her body writhing uncontrollably as if possessed by an unseen force. She reported seeing shadowy figures lurking near her, their ominous presence leaving her terrified and perplexed. Her health deteriorated rapidly, her once vibrant life now dominated by fear and confusion. Medical professionals were puzzled. Despite numerous examinations and tests, they couldn't find a physical explanation for her condition. Estefania's plight was not just a medical mystery. It was a disturbing descent into an uncharted realm of the paranormal. As her health continued to decline, her family watched, helpless, as their beloved daughter, sister, and friend slipped further and further away from them. Then, in August 1991, Estefania's life was abruptly extinguished. Her death was as mysterious as the symptoms that had plagued her in her final months, leaving her family in a state of shock and grief. Estefania's life was cut tragically short, her death shrouded in mystery and unanswered questions, but her passing marked the beginning of something even more unnerving. Her spirit, some believe, did not find peace in death. Instead, it lingered, trapped in the earthly realm, its presence marking the start of a haunting that would torment her family and captivate a nation. The story of Estefania Gutierrez Lazaro and the Vallecas haunting was only just beginning. With Estefania's death, one would think the nightmare had ended. But for the Gutierrez Lazaro family, it was only the beginning. The echoes of Estefania's tragic demise reverberated through the family home in Vallecas, Madrid. But these were no ordinary echoes. The walls of their home seemed to breathe with an eerie life of their own. In the wake of their loss, the family found themselves in the throes of a haunting that defied all logic. It started subtly with the soft whisperings of untraceable noises in the dead of night. A creak here, a thump there. Nothing that couldn't be shrugged off as the house settling or the wind playing tricks. But then, the phenomena escalated. Household objects began to move on their own, as if manipulated by invisible hands. A vase would shift from its place on the table. A chair would rock back and forth in a room devoid of people. The family watched in growing disbelief and fear as their appliances began to malfunction, turning on and off without any human. Intervention. The phenomena seemed to have a particular affinity for the Gutierrez Lazaro family. It was as though they were the epicenter of these strange occurrences, the eye of a paranormal storm that was growing more intense with each passing day. The haunting had become a constant, terrifying reality for the family. Their home, once a sanctuary, was now a stage for the unexplained and the eerie. Their lives were overshadowed by the fear of what might happen next. The haunting had become so intense that the family sought help from an unlikely source, the Spanish police. But would even they be able to stand against the unseen forces that had taken hold of the Gutierrez Lazaro household? Only time would tell. When the law gets involved in a case of the paranormal, you know things have taken a serious turn. 
And that's exactly what happened in the haunting of Vallecas. The Spanish police were called to the Gutierrez Lazaro family home, not once, not twice, but multiple times. Each visit only deepened the mystery and the terror. The officers who responded to the family's calls were initially skeptical. After all, they were trained to deal with the tangible, the explainable. But what they encountered in the Vallecas home was anything but. They reported sudden and unexplainable drops in temperature that sent chills down their spines. They heard strange noises that echoed in the silence of the night, noises that could not be traced to any discernible source. And then there were the shadows, much like Estefania had described before her tragic and mysterious demise, officers reported seeing shadowy figures lurking in the corners of their vision, disappearing when they turned to look. The seasoned officers, hardened by their experiences on the force, found themselves on edge, unnerved by the inexplicable events they were witnessing. But perhaps the most chilling aspect of their involvement was the report they filed. In an unprecedented move, the Spanish police acknowledged the unexplainable nature of the events. Their report, filed with the gravity and sobriety befitting of law enforcement, gave a chilling account of the phenomena they had witnessed. This was not a dismissal or a rational explanation. Rather, it was an admission that they had encountered something they could not explain, something that defied their training and their understanding of the world. This police report lent an air of credibility to the haunting of Valicus. It was no longer just the word of a grieving family against the skepticism of the world. Here was evidence in black and white from an unimpeachable source. The police had seen, had heard, had felt the same terror that the Gutierrez Lazaro family had been living with. They had stepped into the unknown and emerged with more questions than answers. The police report only added to the mystery and fascination surrounding the Vallecas case. It was a testament to the haunting, a chilling reminder of the inexplicable terror that had unfolded in a quiet neighborhood in Madrid. The Vallecas haunting had now become a public spectacle, capturing the attention of paranormal researchers and the media alike. The strange occurrences that plagued the Gutierrez Lazaro family didn't just stay confined within the four walls of their humble abode in Vallecas. No, the whispers of the supernatural reached far and wide, stirring intrigue and fear in the hearts of those who heard the tale. Paranormal researchers, always on the hunt for the next unexplained phenomenon, found themselves drawn to the Vallecas case. The story was ripe with elements that defied logical explanation. A young girl dying under mysterious circumstances, a family tormented by unseen forces, and even a police report that confirmed these inexplicable events. It was a compelling narrative that demanded investigation. And investigate they did. Researchers meticulously combed through every detail of the case, piecing together the narrative from the family's accounts, medical records, and that all-important police report. They conducted their own experiments, attempting to replicate the events that had so terrified the family and the police officers. But the Vallecas case wasn't just a topic of interest for the paranormal community. The media, too, found themselves captivated by the haunting. Newspapers, television, radio, all forms of media in Spain were abuzz with the tale of the Vallecas haunting. It was a story that sold, a story that people wanted to hear. The media attention propelled the Vallecas case into the public consciousness, making it a household name. The police report played a crucial role in this burgeoning public fascination. 
Here was an official document, a testament from the law enforcement, acknowledging the existence of events that defied rational explanation. This was not some tall tale spun by a frightened family. It was something real, something that demanded attention. The Valaikas case, with its blend of mystery and tragedy, had now become a part of Spanish paranormal history. It was a story that fascinated and terrified in equal measure, a story that continues to captivate to this day. Decades have passed since the Valaikas haunting, but the mystery remains. The events that unfolded in that quiet neighborhood continue to captivate, confound, and chill those who dare to delve into the story. The fascination with the Valaikas case is enduring like a ghostly echo that refuses to be silenced. It's a tale that combines the mundane with the inexplicable, the tragic with the terrifying, and it's this mix of elements that keeps us coming back for more, craving answers that remain tantalizingly out of reach. Despite the extensive investigations, the detailed police reports, and the countless hours spent by paranormal researchers trying to unravel the truth, we're left with an enigma. The inexplicable events experienced by the Gutierrez-Lazaro family and the police officers who responded to their call for help remain unaccounted for. No definitive explanation has been offered that satisfies both the skeptics and believers, making the Vallecas case a jewel in the crown of paranormal history. The case's enduring impact can be seen in popular culture, with its influence reaching far beyond the borders of Spain. The 2017 horror movie, Veronica, directed by Paco Plaza, is a testament to this. While the film is a fictionalized account, it's deeply rooted in the Vallecas haunting, bringing the chilling tale to a global audience. The film serves as a stark reminder of the case's lasting resonance, its ability to frighten and fascinate in equal measure. The Vallecas case, with its blend of tragedy, mystery, and the unexplained, continues to hold a macabre allure. It's a haunting tale that makes us question the nature of reality, challenging our understanding of the world we live in. The case serves as a chilling reminder of the thin line between our world and what might lie beyond. A mystery that continues to captivate and terrify us to this day.